Good afternoon and welcome back. Um, here we are again with the, um, the VAX air cordless lift duo and um, the last video I have on my, um, on my, uh, my channel was the unboxing video that we did this last night and um, I said that I would be returning the following day when I managed to charge the batteries up and uh, we would see what this cleaner would do. So, I had the batteries on charge and um, I used the charge that was supplied with the machine and uh, they charged a lot quicker than, the, um, than I thought they would. It's about one and a half hours. Uh, I didn't actually put a timer on it to be honest, but they seemed to be charged very, very quickly on the rapid charger. Um, now, one of the comments uh, that I put on the other video last night was that uh, after it had charged up, I uh, tested the battery using the little um, button. Each battery has a little battery status button. If I uh, just get the battery off here, Each battery basically um, has a little blue button on it, which is just here, which is supposed to be to uh, determine how much power the battery's got in without having it on the machine. And you're supposed to be able to press this button and um, it's supposed to light up the lights according to how much power the battery's got. And uh, when I press this button, like so, it, wasn't, it didn't appear to be working, and I, I put it on the comments that uh, as soon as I charged it, this button wasn't working anymore as you're pressing it in, and it wasn't making these lights coming on. But it all depends on how you press the button. I found with both batteries, you have to press it further towards the bottom, and then when you do that, let's just uh, do it now, it works then. So it's just the way that I was pressing the button. The button's a little bit finicky on the batteries, but uh, if you press it towards the bottom edge rather than the top edge, it does work. So that's cleared that one up just for any in case anybody noticed those comments. So like I say they, they charged very quickly, uh, much much quicker than what the um, Dyson V6 charges. I mean this takes a few hours to charge up when you run this down. Um, the one, thing, one other thing I noticed was that um, I went and had a good run round with it last night after I finished filming using that small battery off my other handheld and uh, it ran for about eight minutes on that. That's with the boost engaged and with the brush bar on. So with maximum power and the brush bar, that small battery, which is half the capacity of this one, ran for about seven to eight minutes, which is um, not very good. So this one here presumably then would last for about uh, 16 to 20 minutes on um, maybe 15 minutes on the boost with the brush bar engaged so out of both batteries you get about 30 minutes and really um, you'd be better off using this with the boost on there constantly. What I also found was that um, when it's used on boost continuously draining it from full to empty and this is an issue I've had with the Dyson as well when I've used it continuously on max gone from full to empty in about six to seven minutes the battery gets very hot well, it doesn't get hot, it gets very, very warm. And uh, what you find is when you stick it on the charger, the charger won't charge it. The, uh, the little charge light flashes and it won't charge. It's basically uh, what, what the Dyson does, it flashes the, uh, it puts the amber light on instead of the blue light on the battery pack and won't charge either. Because the battery packs have to be within a certain temperature range to be able to charge. So if you've used it on maximum and completely drained the battery, that makes this, because of the current that flows through it, it makes the batteries warm. So you have to wait, you leave it on the charge and after about 20 minutes or so it cools down sufficiently and then the charger automatically starts charging then. So at first I thought, oh this is an issue, it's not charging, but no, it is like Dyson. If you drain it quickly on the highest power on the boost, the batteries get warm and won't charge straight away. So, that's that bit, uh, that's the, those two little uh, issues out of the way first. So. Um, what I'm going to do is we're going to put some dirt down a bit later on. I've already got some um, dirt down on the kitchen floor. Well, it's in the bathroom, actually, for the hard floor. Um, we're going to see how well it uh, picks up things like gravy granules, um, bits of rice, porridge, oats, flour. And there's some on the hard floor in there because I want to see how well it does. I've tested it out in here last night. It picks up cat hair just fine and the small particles. But what I'm going to do... I'm going to use my bucket here, which is what the Dyson's picked up in the last few weeks, and put that down on the carpet. I'm not doing a big mess test at this stage. The big mess test is where, you, where I put, literally cover the entire carpet. 
that will come in due course, but for today, we're just doing the uh, sort of first overview and demo of it, and the look at the features, and uh, doing a bit of a pickup testing here. I want to compare its suction to a mains vacuum, and I've got the Vax Mac Air Reach over there, which is basically what this machine is modelled on. So if I bring this up and stand it side by side, we can see very, very similar, very, very similar looking machines. This is the original Vax Mac Air, which came out in about 2010. It's an old machine now, but uh, this basically, when I first saw that, I thought, well, this is based on this, and it's very, very similar setup, very similar. In America, this is called the Hoover Air, okay? So both of these machines are have an American equivalent for any American viewers, so you probably recognise those straight away. Because as I say, both machines are, both companies, Vax UK and Hoover US, are both owned by TTI, which is Tektronic Industries, who are based in uh, Hong Kong, in China. I think it's Hong Kong, I might be wrong, but I think it is. And um, they basically make all their equipment in China. So everything is Chinese made, it's made for cheapness. So these things are not particularly durable for the long term use. People have broken them. They've put it on the website, on reviews, that they've broken them. I've had quite a few comments put on my unboxing video about wheels dropping off, which I already knew about. But I think a lot of that is down to the fact that people just lift them up and drop them down, and they bang them about on hard floors. And if you are rough with these things, they're going to break. It's the same with the Miele, with the Miele S7. If you're rough with it, it's going to break. Even like, um, I believe Vacuum Mad 8 it was. Uh, that's a little, um, the little autistic boy. Um, oh, what's his name now? Uh, uh, Kyle, I think it is, and uh, Vacuum Mad 8 had a V6 and he managed to break it, uh, he managed to break the rod. The pole where it came out of the, uh, the head here, the pole actually sheared in two, so that even these can break if you're rough with them. So, you know, you, if you buy, buy any, anything really, you've got to look after it. If you look after it, it should be okay. Okay? I'm not saying that it won't have manufacturing defects, because I mean this has, and, that, and those have been highlighted in my review I did of this machine, particularly with the hose ends coming off because they weren't glued on properly. And that's an ongoing issue with this machine because they still keep coming off. And really I need to put some proper araldite on there rather than super glue, but I, can't, I haven't got round to it. To be honest, I don't really use this much now. But at the end of the day, you've got to be careful with these things. They're made of ABS plastic, a lot of them are, some of the polypropylene, but if you're going to knock them about and really abuse them, and then, you know, if it falls to bits after a year, you've got no one to blame but yourself. Okay? Now, that might sound a bit harsh, but, you know, I've never managed to break this. Well, I have actually, I have broken a vacuum cleaner by being careless and dropping it. I broke my pure power, and uh, the wheel carriage broke off the bottom. So that's how easy it is to break these things. If you drop them and it's ABS and it just, it just shears, Anyway, so what we're going to do then, we will first of all have a uh, quick look at the um, features of this. I did it yesterday briefly, but we'll have another look now. So um, let's have the camera down and uh, we will go into it. And what I'm also going to do is um, this here is a mini turbo brush, okay? I'm going to compare the suction on this, that, and that, all right? And we're gonna use this tool. And how fast this brush turns, basically, is how much airflow the machine's got to drive it, and how much suction. So what I've already noticed, uh, and I will be demoing this in a bit, is that uh, this brush turns about the same speed on that as it does on that. But when that's in minimum power, okay? This here has got 28 air watts in uh, minimum power. I don't know exactly what the air wattage of this is, but I know that the, uh, the wattage on the side says 150 watts. Now, I'm presuming this is around about 150 watts in low power, being 28 air watts. But in maximum power, this has got 100 air watts, which basically is comparable to something like the light ball over there, which is about 90 to 100 air watts. So when I stick this on there on maximum, this spins quite quickly. But that then has only got a runtime of six minutes at that sort of power. Whereas this hasn't got that sort of uh, boost function, it doesn't go up to 100 air watts, but it will run for longer. So it's a bit of a compromise, I mean this is an older design. What I also said yesterday um, was that I was looking into getting the V8 uh, version of this. 
But then I looked into it a bit further last night. I wanted to really look at the figures um, of what the suction was and the, uh, the wattage of the brush bar and everything to decide whether I really wanted to spend another £329 because I could, I could get the V8 Animal right now in Argos, they've got them in stock. I didn't really want that because it hasn't got the fluffy head but the V8 Animal is in stock in Argos. So I looked at the figures and um, basically the, uh, the V6 Absolute on here and there's the V7 Total Clean and then the V8 and I compared the three of those together. Now the W is weight so it's the V6 was 2.8, 2.2 kilos, the V8 is 2.6. Uh, this is the floor head wattage of the second one. So basically the V6 Absolute has a 50 watt floor head. Uh, the V6 Absolute has suction on low power of 28 air watts, suction on high power of 100. The V7 is uh, 2.3 kilos, about the same weight, a little bit more slightly, but it's only got a 35 watt power head, which is means it will spin slower and not have as much power. Also, the, uh, the, the suction level in low power is only 21 air watts. So that's 7 air watts less than the V6 develops. And its maximum is only 100 as well. So that extra run time that they've achieved with the V7 has been achieved because they slowed the motor down in the uh, low power from 28 to 21. And also they put a lower wattage um, floor head on it. So my V6 Absolute would be better than the V7 in every respect, apart from emptying it, which is more fiddly. The V8 is 2.6 kilos. It's got a 50 watt power head, much like my V6 Absolute. But again, what they've done is to slow the motor down in low power to 22 air watts, as opposed to 28 on the V6. So that in itself is going to make the motor run for longer. And um, it's not 40 minutes it runs for with the floor head, it's 25 which is only 10 minutes more than the V6 runs for. And it's going to run longer because it's got less power in the low mode. So the 115 is basically in high, so it's obviously more powerful in high, but it's only got 7 minutes run time. So I've decided really I'm not going to get the V8 because it just doesn't represent any great improvement apart from the emptying procedure. You know, they, what they've done basically is been very sneaky and slowed the motor down to make it run for longer. So you're not actually going to be picking as much up. It's not going to be as powerful in the, um, the normal mode as the V6 is. So anyway, that's uh, decided for now. I'm going to stick with the V6s because I think they're more powerful. They're lighter and they're smaller than the V8. But anyway, let's get back to this. My mind does wander, but uh, there we go. So this thing so far, I've been quite impressed with uh, from last night. This is the... Um, the the air cordless lift duo and uh, it has the dual cyclone design here uh, if you look up and down the cleaner here the um, brush bar head has got the uh, the small diameter uh, brush in there it's got the um, high capacity battery on the front and those are easily changed by just clicking the top here you can pull it out of the cleaner like so um, I went into this last night. These are obviously um, these are twice the capacity of the smaller version, which is in my handheld in the kitchen. It's a 20 watt, but I did measure it on my meter last night, and it was uh, actually giving out only 18.4 volts. So the maximum wattage uh, voltage is 20, and it doesn't actually achieve that. It gives a 72 watt hour. Uh, that's capacity, and it's a lithium ion. Okay, so we're not actually working at 20 volts, we're working at 18.4. So I'd imagine then that the Dyson probably wouldn't be the voltage that's stated, it would probably be a little bit less. So that's the battery pack. Um, on the back, which is um, a good revision from the original um, uh, air cordless, is the fact they give you a longer hose, which uh, is rather good, but longer hose means less airflow, and it's not got much airflow to begin with. So if you're going to try cleaning up the stairs with this, you're not going to have an awful lot of airflow. I'll tell you that now. Plus the fact that they don't actually give you a tool that's actually any good for cleaning the stairs with. They do give you this, but I mean it's a little bit, uh, it's not really the right shape to do the stairs. It needs to be a little bit smaller. This is more of a mattress tool or an upholstery tool. So really this machine is not that suitable for doing the stairs. You can use the lift off feature. <clears throat> which basically is you press this button down here and lift the uh, the canister off like so and then you're left with basically the uh, the floor head and the spine and the handle which is very similar to the shark lift away that's uh, that seems to be how that one works 
and again this is very light now now that the main power unit's taken off that's light the main weight is actually in this part here because as well as that you can have the battery in here and the motor as well but it's the same again with the shark everything is contained within the lift away pod the motor the cable everything is in the lift away part so that doesn't actually reduce the weight that drastically by taking that off there what it does mean though is that you can carry this up the stairs with you and uh, I mean if you wanted to try and do the stairs with that nozzle I mean it's going to be a little bit difficult isn't it um, the other one the other thing they supply you with is this up top tool but that really isn't much good for doing the stairs that's better for dusting and the other tool they supply you with is um, basically the combination tool which is this here that's got the little dusting brush on the end and again it's a crevice tool but that isn't much good for doing the stairs so whilst they say that you can pick it up and carry it upstairs to do the stairs what are you going to do the stairs with there isn't actually a proper stair tool supplied with this machine I mean you could carry it out to your car <coughs> pardon me and attempt to clean your car with it but um, I'd suggest you use it in boost mode uh, to do that with. So that's the way the lift away pod works, basically, like so. And uh, let's just put the battery pack back in it. Put that back in, like so. And then we can uh, show you it working here. That's on the normal power. Boost button there, it's a bit light inside. So basically that's your, that's your lift away pod and uh, you have that little LED that stays on all the time whether it, regardless of whether it's lifted on or lifted off the cleaner. That's basically when you, when you lie it down, there's two little um, LEDs inside here, two little LED chips and they are intensely bright. So that's quite a good feature, but again, that's going to use battery power up. So if you weren't that keen on light bulbs or the lights, then, you know, it does use a slight bit of power, but I wouldn't have thought much, because LEDs are quite uh, power efficient. Right, looking at the bottom of here, basically, we've got the, the floor head, right? Um, this has got the sort of the, uh, the small diameter brush roll fitted in it. We can take this off by clicking down one of those and one of those clips there and lift the sole plate away. Then you can take out the brush roll by just simply lifting it out there. And then you take it out of the uh, belt at the other end, which is a little bit inconvenient, I think, but that's just the way it seems to be done. And then we've got to try and put it back in with one hand. And I might have to just put the camera down while I do that. Right, so there we go. So now we can just stick the, um, the cover back on. Oh, incidentally, inside here we've got this like uh, red plastic uh, air channel here, which has sort of an air channel on the front there, which goes up, up over the top and comes out here. This is what they call the wind tunnel technology. Uh, it's supposed to add a little bit of extra suction to it, but uh, I can't see it would make that much difference on the cleaner with this uh, low power. Right, so that's that. So you can get your brush roll out nice and easily uh, for cleaning. You can make sure that that's clipped in properly and engaged on the lugs on the bottom. And we can see the little uh, brush roll motor inside there. I don't know what the wattage of that motor is because it doesn't say so on the machine. I'd imagine it won't be very much. I know the Dyson absolute 50 watts, which is quite a good wattage for a battery power, but this obviously isn't going to be anywhere near that. So the hose actually uh, comes in from the bottom of the machine in the middle, which is basically the same as the way that one does there. That's got a middle uh, suction channel where the hose goes in at the back. So they are very, very similar machines. Right, so we can clip the... Um, hose back on over the top. Excuse me while I just uh, do that. That's lovely. And again that's got a little uh, bracket here which you can stick your hose over the top and then it goes back onto that uh, lug down the bottom of there and then engages with the top clip here. 
and then clicks into place. So that's very, very easy to take on and take off. This is the uh, removable wand, which you press the lever down on the back of here, like so. And then you can lift that wand out. And then on top of the wand, we can put um, the high dusting brush here, like so, so that you can use that then to do on top of cupboards or to get up and do the uh, coving and get the uh, cobwebs down. So we can use that on there. We can also put that on it as well. Or these will both attach onto the end, directly onto the end of the hose. They will, you have to take my word for that. So that's the, uh, the handle, but it's not telescopic. This isn't a telescopic handle as what that machine would have. But basically you, you can see when I put these back to back, just how similar that setup is. When you look at the bottoms, where the hose goes in the middle here, and you can detach the hose. Also, the way the hose goes into the middle of there as well. Very, very, very similar, that is, to um, the original Mac Air, isn't it? But then again, you see, this is called the, uh, the Air Cordless. So it's, the Air name is there. So let's look at the bin again. That's um, the bin there. Inside the top of here is basically your motor unit. So we can just about see the bottom of the motor there. There is no uh, no uh, exhaust filter inside this, presumably because it's a different type of motor to a, a mains powered. Maybe it wouldn't produce as much carbon dust, I don't know, or it may just restrict too much airflow having another filter in there. So it does tend to be a little bit noisy, but uh, basically your main filter is a big thick foam pad filter which goes inside the lid there. And that literally just pulls out, I can't do it with one hand here, like this, but that filter just pulls out of the lid, and there's the other side of it. And um, they say you need to wash this every four to six uses. What I might end up doing is just taking it out every so often and using the V6 there to vacuum it off with on maximum power. Um, to, as opposed to having to keep washing this in water all the time, because basically that takes a good 24 hours to dry. and it tends to make these things to fall to pieces after you wash them so many times but you can get these on the Vax website I think they're about a tenner something like that to replace them or get a spare one I have looked into the price of spares of these it's not that expensive buying spares apart from the batteries which are about 80 quid so there we go that's the bin it is a multi-cyclonic separator in here as opposed to the original one which looked very similar inside, but this had a multi-cyclone uh, separator inside it. And again, when you look at the base here, you can see that the brush roll, very, very similar in size. But this one, obviously, it's got much more power being a 1200 watt motor, as opposed to this one, which is literally 150 watts. So this has got eight times more power than the battery powered one has. So what we're gonna do is just compare the suction by using this turbo brush. And what I'm going to have to do is that uh, the actual mess test part of it, uh, putting the dirt down, is going to have to follow in another video. So we're going to have to have a video following this one because I'm down to just six minutes remaining on this now. So we'll do these little comparisons with this and then I'll end the video and then I'll make another video where we uh, put the dirt down and see what it can pick up and then I'll have another half an hour to do that with. That'll have to be how we do these. So. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put this turbo brush, first of all, on the end of this hose here. Right. Let's see if we can just put the camera down there. What I'm going to do is put the turbo brush on the end of here, like so, and I'm going to turn this on, and we'll see how fast the turbo brush goes round. That's on normal power. And that's on boost. So basically, that machine cannot drive a turbo brush, right? This is the turbo brush that came with the uh, mains powered VAX. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the Dyson V6 down. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick this on the end of a Henry pole. 
like so. So that basically I can attach the end into the end of here and push it up to the rubber seal. And then we're going to see how fast the Dyson turns this. And this is very tricky to try and film here, so let's put that down. What I have to do is to keep my hands onto the, uh, the joint so that no air can leak, right? Now I'm going to turn the Dyson on in low power. And we can see there that really that doesn't have any more difference than the, uh, the air cordless in the standard um, long last power. Right, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it on max. And I'll try that again. And as you can see, the max power works it an awful lot better. So, you can see just how much power the Dyson V6 has got in max. It is comparable, really, to an upright. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to just put this on the Vax corded version, and then we'll see how fast it turns. But for that, being a corded, I've got to plug it in. And that means having to put, unwind the cable, which is such an effort, I know. And we'll uh, stick that in here. We'll stick it in the watt meter and show that this machine basically... Um, that's a 1200 watt motor and indeed it does use just under 1200 watts, about 1150 watts for this motor here. So we'll stick the um, turbo brush on the end of this one. So, as you can see from that, that spins much, much, much faster on that machine than it does even on the Dyson on maximum power, because that develops, I think it's about 100 air watts, that machine does, the Dyson V6 on max, uh, which is comparable to the Dyson light ball here, which is a 700 watt motor. But then you look at the 1200 watt motor, and then uh, you can see then that uh, the more powerful vacuum cleaners do indeed have much more capability. That's just a 1200 watt machine which is now banned by the EU. They can't produce them that, that powerful anymore because the EU says it's just too powerful 1200 watts. So now we have to have 900 watts or under. So a 700 watt machine would turn this, it would turn it reasonably okay. And indeed, that does come with its own tangle-free turbine tool. Well, the animal version does, but uh, you can buy one for this anyway. And that's reasonable, reasonable performance. But what I'm saying is, is that this machine here, and most machines that aren't the Dyson V6 with the um, max function and the digital motor, will not produce the airflow that you need to drive anything like this. So basically, this machine really is for very light pickups of uh, small messes and for just daily whip rounds. It's not going to be, this machine is not going to be a direct replacement for any kind of mains vac like this. Bear in mind, you know, that this here is outlawed now as well for being too powerful at 1200 watts. The current Vax Mac uh, Air uh, versions of this are 700 watts, which is still a good four and a half to five times more powerful than this one. Okay, so that little test there has just proved that this is not, it's not, not going to replace a mains powered. And what I'm going to do on the next video, now we've looked into all the little features of this, I'm going to put the mess down in here and there's some in the bathroom and we will see exactly what it can pick up, okay? So I'll see you very soon in the next video.